I am at Bandelier National Monument near Los Alamos, New Mexico. This is a really cool national park with Pueblo and Cliff dwellings, and I've never been here, and it's, uh, it's apparently very crowded. Uh, so anyways, we're gonna go check this out. I'm going to start off my visit at the Visitor Center, but before I head over there, I notice there are lots of these small antique cars parked everywhere. There must be some kind of club visiting today. I believe these are MGB sports cars. It was a British brand that was produced throughout the 1960s and 70s. This was unexpected but cool to see. The main trail of Bandelier starts here at the Bandelier Civilian Conservation Corps Historic District. This is the largest assemblage of surviving structures built and used by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the national parks, and probably in the entire country. The Civilian Conservation Corps program of the New Deal provided work for $1 a day to unemployed young men during the Great Depression, building infrastructure at the various national and state parks. There are 32 buildings around here built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. They are designated as a National Historic Landmark. So COVID-19 is still a big problem, and sadly the Visitor Center Museum exhibits are closed off for the time being. Hopefully they will be open next time. These Pueblo Revival structures were critical to improving visitor accessibility and services here at Bandelier National Monument. The road into Frijoles Canyon that ends here was also constructed during that time. It is really cool to see these Civilian Conservation Corps structures. While they had very little funding to build these, they did have a massive surplus of labor, so the structures were built well and highly detailed. It's unlike anything they would build today. While the museum is closed, of course the gift shop is open, so let's check in here. The ceilings are built with classic Pueblo Revival Vigas. There's also this fireplace with an authentic medallion featuring Smokey the Bear. Of course, Smokey the Bear was a real bear who survived a wildfire here in New Mexico and ended up as the longtime mascot of forest fire prevention programs. All of this was originally the Frijoles Canyon Lodge. It was a hotel back in the day. That is a horno, an adobe oven. The main loop trail begins behind the former lodge building, and that is what I'll be doing on this visit. This is about a two and a half mile loop trail that passes by most of the major sites, including Pueblo and Ruins and Cliff Dwellings. This should be really awesome. Just looking at the cliff face of Frijoles Canyon there, you can see many evident holes carved into the canyon wall. Those were presumably made by the ancestral Puebloans. They lived here in the remote Frijoles Canyon from about 1150 to 1550 CE, and left behind some of the most fascinating ruins in the American Southwest. Bandelier is among the oldest national monuments, and one of the classics having been established back in 1916. This could have been the second national park after Yellowstone. Dr. Edgar Lee Hewitt, an archaeologist and anthropologist who was instrumental in pushing for the Antiquities Act and starring the Museum of New Mexico, absolutely loved this region. The larger area above Frijoles Canyon is known as the Paarito Plateau, a remarkably scenic area that Hewitt really appreciated. During the 1890s and early 1900s, he tried to encourage the establishment of Paarito Park, or Paarito National Park, to preserve the natural beauty and Pueblo and ruins. However, his attempt had very limited success, and most of the land he wanted to be preserved fell into other hands. However, the southern end of the Paarito Plateau, Frijoles Canyon here, did eventually become a national monument. The monument is actually named after a Swiss-born archaeologist named Adolf Bandelier, who also did a lot of work and research here in New Mexico, especially here at the Frijoles Canyon ruins and cliff dwellings. This was one of his favorite spots. The first ruins visitors stumble across on the trail are those of a big kiva. This would have been a ceremonial, religious, and political center of the Puebloans here in Frijoles Canyon. This one is 42 feet wide and was 8 feet deep. There are the remains of some platform stands and fire pit locations inside the subterranean chamber. It was apparently built a good ways from the Cubane Pueblo. That's going to be the next stop. Mm -hmm. 
These are the remains of the Kiwene Pueblo, which began construction around 1350 and was added onto until the Puebloans abandoned the canyon in the mid 16th century. There would have been about 400 rooms within this pueblo, mostly communal living spaces and food storage areas. This pueblo was excavated by Edgar Lee Hewitt in the early 20th century. Interestingly, it was built in the shape of an oval. It's hard to tell from here, but it's definitely got some curvature to it. The structure surrounded a central plaza. There is also a kiva here at the Pueblo. It's not as large as the other one, but it would have served its purpose. These ruins are sprawling. This is quite impressive. Now I am going to ascend a ways up the canyon wall, just like the Puebloans did to access their cliff dwellings. This is going to be awesome. We can see the circular shape of the Kiwene Pueblo. Obviously that would have been planned out by the builders, so that's really neat. Besides the Pueblo and ruins and immense historical significance of this place, Frijoles Canyon is stunning. There's lots of color and geographic contrast throughout here. As previously mentioned, all of these holes in the canyon walls were created by the Puebloans, and they were the locations of wood beams for roofs of structures that would have been built along the canyon walls. They would usually enter those structures by climbing down through the roofs, so there were small but tall structures along this canyon wall right here. It's just that none of them have really survived. So there are just tons of holes scarring the canyon wall. Just a warning if you visit, there are some pretty small steps and tight spaces to walk through on this trail up the canyon, but it is very rewarding. That is one of the authentic cliff dwellings built into the canyon hundreds of years ago. It's just a big hole carved into the cliff face. Visitors can actually climb a ladder and go up into this one. So heck yeah, I'm doing it. All right, I'm actually in a Puebloan cliff dwelling. Not a lot of space in here. This is the inside of a unique bandolier cliff dwelling. I'm unsure if a family would have lived in here what exactly the purpose was. There isn't too much information known about these cliff dwellers. They're a lot different than say Mesa Verde, 
home to the most impressive cliff dwellings, as some of those are literal cities built in very large cliff alcoves. There's nothing like that here, but it is still very impressive in its own right. This is the Talus House, a reproduction of one of the houses that would have been built from rock debris at the bottoms of the cliffs. And these were usually built in front of the cliff dwellings. So there may have been a structure just like this in front of the one I was just in. This is a reconstruction on the site of a real one. This one was built in the 1920s, but it's still really neat to see how they incorporated the canyon wall into the structure. And there would have been several of these along this trail. There's definitely some black varnish on those cave walls. Here's another cliff dwelling with a ladder. Let's check out this one. This dwelling appears to be a little more expansive than the other one. It's much more roomy in here. Despite the frighteningly narrow steps, this is a really fun trail. I have come across yet another cliff dwelling. This one actually has some adobe brick wall built into it to fill the space. The paint job on this interior appears to be fully restored. The other ones seem to resemble this color scheme, so they must have painted them somehow. It does appear there is some graffiti in here.
Continuing along the main trail, I have made it to the Longhouse. Along this portion of the cliff base, lots of individual house structures were built very close together, utilizing the canyon wall on the back side. While there are just foundation ruins left today, these must have been pretty cool. Apparently these were about three or four stories tall, probably quite a bit larger than the Talus house we saw earlier. Of course along the cliff face there are lots of carved holes, which would have been the locations of roof beams. There are some larger holes in the wall, which may have been additional dwelling rooms or storage areas. There are also many petroglyphs along this wall. There is a well-preserved section of a petroglyph pattern. So back on the canyon floor, the trail loops around back to the visitor center with lots of scenery along the way. A small creek passes through the canyon, that would have been a very convenient water source. There are some other cool locations here at Bandelier, so unfortunately I do not have enough time to do the half mile branch off the trail to the Alcove House, which is one of the best features of the park. I'll save that for my next visit. It's like walking through a forest on this section of the trail, very different from the sandstone canyon wall and giant rock formations just over there. This was the site of the Ranch Place, otherwise known as the Lodge of the Ten Elders, which was built in the mid-1920s and operated by Evelyn and George Frey. Before the Civilian Conservation Corps built the road and other facilities, including the Frijoles Canyon Lodge, it was the only place to stay and get food in this remote national monument. It was raised when the Corps built the new lodge. So the main trail here at Bandelier is absolutely fantastic, with some great scenery and very interesting Puebloan ruins and cliff dwellings. 
I've been to a lot here in the southwest, and these were really unique. Now I'm going to drive up the canyon a little ways toward the park entrance to get a better lookout point of the canyon. This is the Frijoles Canyon Overlook, an incredible vista over the canyon and southern Pajarito Plateau near the park entrance. The scenery and mountains around Bandelier and Los Alamos really are stunning. No wonder Dr. Hewitt wanted this to be preserved. So that was my first visit to Bandelier National Monument, one of the classic national park sites. This one really is excellent and definitely worth a visit. If you enjoyed this video, then please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. I have filmed videos at many other national parks and monuments across the country, including many here in the southwest, like the nearby Kashakatui Tent Rocks, Mesa Verde, as well as Chaco Canyon, home to perhaps the most significant Pueblo in ruins. I also have other videos on interesting museums, historic sites, roadside attractions, and more across America. Thanks for watching.